we'll now discuss we'll now discuss a graphical way of representing the sets that is called the venn diagrams the venn diagram the venn diagram right now venn diagram is a graphical representation of the sets okay so it is the graphical representation of the sets that was that was representation of the sets that was first formulated by john venn okay john venn he was an an english logician right so 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 he first started this now we soon see that that looking at it in the graphical manner on a piece of paper makes the understanding of the sets pretty simpler than than what it is when you kind of imagine it in your mind right now whenever we do that we first of all discuss something that is called a universal set okay a universal set now what is a universal set it is that set okay which contains all the all the which 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 it is that set which contains all the elements all the elements all the elements which belong to the which belong to the context okay which belong to that context right so let us say let us say we decide to make a survey in say a city city a b c right we we, we are trying to to conduct a survey and now that survey can be limited to say the boys right say the boys of age group say 10 to 17 okay the product that you are trying to sell or or you are trying to assess the market of is is kind of it caters to boys of of 10 to 17 years of age of city a b c then your universal set will be all the boys of this city who are between 10 to 17 years of age okay so so that's why i am saying that which belong to the context in which we are talking about right let us say if we if we expand this to to some country x y z okay and maybe x y x y x y z and maybe we are concerned about a product that is that's meant for senior citizens so let us say from 60 years of age to 85 years of age and it could be male or a female then for this purpose the universal set okay the universal set will be all the all the citizens all the citizens of all the citizens of 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 the country x y z okay between 60 to 85 years male or female right the same goes maybe so so you have to first of all uh, first of all set the context what you are talking about and each and every element of that 
will be considered to be belonging to the universal set right and when we talk about the universal set we we represent the universal set by a rectangle and denote it by a u which we normally kind of write like this okay we we, we put this this dash there there, there is a specific reason because very shortly we will be introducing a concept of the union of the sets and that is represented something like that. And many a times you are doing the union of a universal set with something, some other set and had you not given this, it will seem as if this is the, this is the sign for the union, right? So, so just to distinguish it from there, from, from this sign, we, we, we put this, this, this dash over, over both, the, both the arms of U, right? Fine. Now, this becomes your universal set, fine. And it may have, say, say I am talking about all the natural numbers less than 15. So, what happens? 1, okay, 2 say three four no definite order because because the, because it does not kind of depend on that seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen right everything less than than fifty so 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 this becomes the universal set with reference to the context we are talking about it contains all the elements, right? Now, I may have a set A that contains these elements, right? So, any subset of the universal set is denoted by a circle, right? So, so any subset of the universal set Is, is is represented by a circle and how about how about the universal set this is number two universal set is represented by a rectangle okay rectangle okay Now let, let us say this is a set A, so we write it outside the circle. That will mean that this is set A. We could have another set B which contains the elements 2 as well as 3. So I'll show it something like this. You see? Set B. Right? So, how can I write set B? Set B can be written as the one that has elements 2 and 3. And what is set A? Set A is, is something that has 3, 4, 5 and 6. Right? There could be some other set which, which may have say, 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 7 and 8 as its elements. That set may be called the set C. So, I'll say that set C is like that. Correct? We can, we can see that in between set A and B, the element 3 is common to both of them. And that is pretty visible even without looking at this, right? Now, that is the power of this. This this graphical representation which which we which we decided to call the Venn diagram right so 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 the power of the Venn diagram is is this okay 
and and we can very well see that there is no element common to to set C and A and for that matter set B and set C. For that too, I do not have to refer this, refer to the elements. Okay, so that is the that, that that's the power of the of the of the pictures of of the graphs, and and it's not for nothing that we say that that uh, that a that that a that a picture says thousand words, right? A picture is worth thousand words. So so. And, and it will become more interesting and more uh, important as we try to do the operations on these sets, right? For example, trying to find out the union of the sets, okay? First of all, we'll define what the union is, then we'll, we'll see how the union is formed and, and what does it represent on a Venn diagram, right? That's what we'll do the next. But before we go to that, I, I'd like to, to show you something more. So let us say there is another set, set, say E, right, or, or, or D, right. So D is, it contains 5 and 6. And just looking at this, you can say that, the set D, all the elements that belong to set D, they also belong to set A. So, so by definition, the set D is a subset of set A. That is also pretty obvious just looking at the diagram and we just need not kind of compare the elements of A and D, right? And, and that's, that's the power, that, that's how it's further illustrated. And, and now as we go to find out how we find the unions and intersections and, and the subtractions between the sets, we'll find that Venn diagrams is a pretty simple way of understanding what is happening at the level of the sets, right?